Smoothed Particle Hydrodynamics, referred to as SPH, is a modeling technique available in Apicus Explicit. SPH is a very general approach to the simulation of bulk matter in motion. It addresses modeling needs in cases where traditional methods fail or are inefficient, such as in the simulation of extremely violent fluid flows, where mesh or grid-based computational fluid dynamics cannot cope. For example, this can be the case when simulating waves and shallow water flows. SPH can also be used to simulate extremely high deformations, including obliteration, for which the cell technique may be inefficient and Lagrangian FEM is difficult. This may be the case for impacts, spraying, and snow compaction. Besides classical hydrodynamics, the SPH method is widely applied to many areas of mechanics. Therefore, the term hydrodynamics may be interpreted as mechanics in general. However, the primary application of SPH is in Lagrangian continuum mechanics. The earliest applications of SPH were mainly focused on fluid dynamics. Since then, its use has been extended to the simulation of the fracture of brittle solids, metal forming, high or hypervelocity impact, and explosion phenomena caused by the detonation of high explosives. Note that in solids related applications, such as this impact example, one of the bodies must be modeled using regular finite elements. In the example, the continuum solid projectile perforates a plate that is modeled using an SPH patch at its center. The novelty of SPH lies in a specific method for smooth interpolation and differentiation within an irregular grid of moving macroscopic particles. Because nodal connectivity is not fixed, severe element distortion is avoided, hence the formulation allows for very high strain gradients. SPH incorporates all the viscous and conductive dissipative mechanisms that convert work to heat and can be formulated such that the conservation laws of mass, linear momentum, and energy are satisfied exactly. SPH analysis is an abacus explicit capability implemented for three-dimensional models. Note that axisymmetric models can be simulated using a wedge-shaped sector and symmetry boundary conditions. Any of the material models available in Apicus Explicit, including user-defined materials, can be used. Initial and boundary conditions can be specified as for any Lagrangian model. Concentrated nodal loads can be applied in the usual way. However, the only distributed load type allowed is gravity. Particles can be visualized in Apicus CAE as circular disks, as you have seen in all the examples shown in this presentation. At present, there is no direct support for the creation of particle elements in Apicus CAE. However, the initial SPH model preparation can be accomplished within Apicus CAE after which some manual editing of the input file generated by Apicus CAE will be required to complete the SPH model definition. Let's take a closer look at the workflow for creating the SPH portion of an Apicus model. Starting in Apicus CAE, the first step is to create the geometry for the SPH part. The second is to create an auxiliary continuum solid mesh. The current SPH implementation assumes that at the beginning all particles are distributed uniformly in space, and that each particle is associated with a small cube centered at the particle. Therefore, to reduce inaccuracies in the mass distribution, the auxiliary mesh should be as regular as possible. Step 3 in the workflow is to create a node set that includes all the nodes of the auxiliary mesh. This set will be used to create dummy mass elements at the nodes of the auxiliary mesh. Later, you will convert these to particle elements. Next, create the material. Instance the SPH part, apply initial and boundary conditions, and request field and history output. 
The element output available for particle elements includes all mechanics-related output for continuum elements. And the nodal output includes all output variables generally available in Abacus Explicit Analyses. This completes the portion of the model that can be defined in Abacus CAE. So the next step is to write the input file, which will be edited using a text editor in Part 2 of the workflow. In a text editor, start by removing the auxiliary continuum solid mesh from the file. Then, change the mass elements to PC3D particle elements. Remove the dummy mass keyword option from the file, and in its place, use the solid section option to associate the particle elements with the material defined previously in Abacus CAE. Next, define a node-based surface that includes all the SPH particles. Note that particle elements do not have faces or edges. Therefore, an element-based surface cannot be defined on these elements. Finally, define contact interactions between the node-based particle surface and any other node or element-based surfaces in the model. I will now demonstrate the described workflow using a bird strike example, where a bird, in the form of a cylindrical projectile, hits an airplane engine blade. The blade model, which is built using conventional shell elements, already exists in the model database, so I will proceed with the creation of the bird model. First, I will create a deformable part to model the bird. I will sketch a circle and specify a radial dimension of 0.04 meters. The height of the extruded cylinder will be 0.076 meters. Before meshing the newly created part, I will partition the cylinder in half using the normal to edge method. Once this is done, I can mesh the bird using continuum brick elements. I will set the approximate global mesh size to be equal to the size of a small cube at each SPH particle. To produce as uniform a mesh as possible, I will use the medial axis mesh algorithm with minimized mesh transitions. Note that the SPH method can be used to model bodies of any size. The particle size used in SPH applications is arbitrary. However, the smaller the particle size, the more detailed the result. Next, I will create a part level set containing all the bird nodes. This will be used in the next step to create point masses, and later I will use it to define a node-based bird surface. Now I will switch to the property module and create point masses with an arbitrary mass value at each node of the auxiliary mesh. Note that Apicus CAE displays green square glyphs to indicate the presence of mass elements at the nodes. In this example, the material properties of the bird are described by a tabular equation of state, which is not directly supported by Apicus CAE. The keyword editor can be conveniently used to define the tabular equation of state material. Next, I will instance the bird part in the assembly module and translate it to a predefined location. Now, I will apply translational velocity to all the nodes of the bird in the global three direction. Next, I will create a part level node set that I will use to request history output at a central point on the projectile base that is closest to the blade. Once the set is defined, I will create a history output request for displacements. This completes the Abacus CAE portion of the model preparation. I will switch to the job module, write the input file, and leave Abacus CAE open for later visualization of the analysis results. I will now manually modify the input file produced by Abacus CAE. In a text editor, I will start by removing the auxiliary continuum solid elements from the input file. 
Then I will change the mass elements to PC3D particle elements. I will remove the dummy mass keyword option from the file and in its place use the solid section option to associate the particle elements with the material defined previously in Abacus CAE. Note that the characteristic length associated with the particle volume is half the size of the small cube associated with each SPH particle. Recall that when I meshed the bird, I specified an approximate global mesh size of 5 millimeters, so the characteristic length given here is 2.5 millimeters. Next, I will define a node-based surface that includes all the SPH particles using the part level node set defined earlier in Apicus CAE. Recall that particle elements do not have faces or edges, therefore I must use a node-based surface rather than an element-based surface. Finally, I will define contact interactions between the particle surface and the aircraft engine blade. Now the input data preparation is complete. I will submit the analysis from a command prompt using double precision. After the job completes, we can study the results in the Abacus CAE visualization module. First, I will visualize the blade deformation as a result of the impact with the bird using a time history animation. Next, I will contour the stress distribution in the cylindrical projectile at specific time points. Note that the values of the field output variables are shown as circular patches of color in the contour plots. Symbol plots can be used to visualize distributions of various vector fields, such as velocity. Finally, I will create a history plot of the turbine hub displacement. The plot shows that for the blade design under consideration, the hub displacements resulting from the bird impact are formidable. Before concluding this short introduction to the Abacus Explicit SBH capability, I will draw your attention to some of the current limitations. Besides the already mentioned lack of Abacus CAE support, and the potential inaccuracy of the initial mass distribution, note that surface loads cannot be specified on particle elements. However, you can transfer pressure from adjacent finite element surfaces onto the particle elements using contact interactions. The mixing of bodies with dissimilar materials cannot be modeled. SPH particles only interact with each other if they have been defined with the same section definition. More information can be found in the Abacus Analysis Users Manual and in the SPH training material included in the Abacus Explicit Advanced Topics course.